everybody and welcome back. I'm Olive Boy and you are watching Vintage vs. Modern, a series in which I take two or sometimes more pens, uh, one from long ago and one from more recently to compare how pen design has changed in that amount of time. So today, as you may see from what I'm holding and the title of this video, we are going to be looking at the Aurora Duo Cart. The Aurora Duo Cart, when it came out recently, was kind of interesting to me because I'd actually never even heard of the vintage one. So I was like, is this just a vintage style pen they're releasing? What's the deal with that? You know, and I find that interesting because often, like, a vintage re-release is a pen that everyone has heard of. Like, the Parker Duo Folds, the Parker 51, like, stuff that's, like, really out there. Um, and the Duo Cart is kind of like, I want to call it like a B-side of Aurora's history because the 88 was kind of the main thing. So I'm very excited to get the chance to try out both the vintage and modern equivalents uh, of this pen because I think they are, frankly, both underrated. They're both pretty sweet little pens. The original uh, duo cart was kind of a alternate version of an 88. Uh, for a long time, you know, the 88 was a, uh, a pen that was wildly popular across the world. Uh, starting in 1946, it had a bunch of different trim finishes and was mostly a piston filler until later on when the duo card version came out as plastic cartridges started to become more and more common across the world. Eventually, like all of the 88s, it was discontinued um, and uh, several years after the 88 remake was released, uh, the duo cart remake was released, uh, and found, I would say, moderate success, being that it doesn't have as much of a historical cachet as some other remakes have. That doesn't make it a bad pen, though, and I'm excited to show you a pen that is modern, but has a certain vintage aesthetic that I find appealing, and, uh, could possibly even recommend. So, let's get right into it. All right, folks, let's take a look at these two beautiful Italian pens, starting, as always, with our vintage one, the original uh, 1940s Duo Cart. So, this is a relatively, I guess, standard size pen. It's 136 millimeters capped. Um, and it's got kind of a short cap, uh, which I noticed the, for the first time when comparing it to the modern pen. But uh, yeah, it is a pull cap. Uh, it's got kind of a clutch ring there, similar to things like the Parker 51, which was its contemporary. Uh, it is also a pretty light pen. Um, of course, you know, this is a cartridge fill pen. It is 17 grams. And uh, that's with a cartridge in there, though. Actually, only one cartridge, not, not the both. It is a black thermoplastic pen, I do not know exactly what kind, with a gold hooded nib. Uh, you can see there the Aurora logo on the section, uh, which is quite a nice detail. I, I really like finding one of these in good condition, especially like the Vintage 88, uh, which you may have seen in an earlier video. It is a nice detail on an otherwise very kind of minimalistic pen. The way you fill this pen is, of course, via cartridge, but it's kind of a special cartridge. Uh, it is the kind of a double cartridge, you know, hence the name Duo Cart. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting system. So, as you can see here, I only have one of the two cartridges that would normally go in here, but the idea would be that you have both of these cartridges in this, and then when you one is empty, you flip it around and you put the other cartridge in. The cartridges are kind of hard to find, but um, I'm, I'm sure you could find them if you looked. And then there's, of course, this little connector piece that is separate. Um, I haven't tried with other brands of cartridges. I know Modern Auroras, specifically that one, can take a Lamy cartridge, and you know, it might be worth taking a look. So yeah, while a modern Aurora will fit a Lamy cartridge, the sec uh, the connector nipple uh, will not fit a, a Lamy cartridge, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure if it could fit anything else. It is a pretty wide-mouthed 
cartridge. But uh, it, yeah, it's meant it's meant for the duo cart. Another interesting thing is the rattle of this pen. So normally when a pen rattles, it is because something is broken, but that is actually by design in this pen. I'm sure you can hear that. And that is due in part to a little ball on a chain at the back of the pen that basically would, if there was a second cartridge in here that wouldn't rattle, it would, it would seat itself right in the opening to the cartridge and just kind of hold it steady. Uh, I don't know if it had any sealing effects, but apparently that's, that's why that ball is in there. Um, being that I only have the one cartridge, it's just kind of really annoying. Um, and I feel like that's, in my opinion, some, some kind of a design flaw, but I guess it, you know, if it worked, why, why not? Uh, finally, the last little detail on this pen are these two little metal discs, one on the top and one on the bottom. I'm sure these are for just style points and a little bit of weight, but uh, otherwise this is a very kind of straightforward pen. Uh, definitely, you know, paved the way for a lot of cartridge filling modern pens uh, and was very popular at the time. You can tell that it was popular because they remade it as the uh, Modern Duo Cart. So the Modern Duo Cart is uh, about the same size, a little bit shorter actually, uh, in every dimension, um, and about the same width, so similar. But another thing that's changed, of course, is the proportions. Uh, the cap is now a full-length cap instead of a short one, and uh, the pen has a more traditional silhouette. An interesting thing, though, is that it weighs... 10 grams more. So this is a 27 gram pen, not a heavy one by any means, but definitely like compared to the vintage one has some real genuine heft to it. And I don't know how I feel about that. But uh, anyway, moving on from that, uh, you pull off the cap as you would on a vintage one to reveal a similar but different <laughs> hooded nib. This one is a steel nib uh, compared to the gold nib on the older one with a plastic feed and uh, not really as as well designed or good looking tip. Uh, it's honestly kind of reminiscent of the you know the difference between a modern Parker 51 and a vintage one but to less of a degree. Um, so, you know, not quite as tight tolerances, not quite of an, a pleasing look, but not, I guess, offensive. And, uh, then of course you can access a cartridge or converter converter. In this case, it is a, you know, pretty standard piston style converter, nothing really to write home about. Um, and then you've got your little trim ring here. Uh, you know, you've got the nice little reminiscent metal discs at the top and bottom. It is a decently, uh, you know, good remake, I would say. Um, one thing I noticed too, when I, when I opened the barrel is that there's actually a metal liner on the inside. So it's not heavy because it's heavy inherently. It's just, they added weight to make it feel higher quality. Uh, and you know, I, I kind of get that, but I also find it a little bit cheesy because there's no reason. It just happens that some people think a heavier pen is better. I am of the opinion that a pen should be exactly the way it needs to be and this seems unnecessary but that is neither here nor there now it is time to test out the writing performance of these two pens so let's go for the vintage duo cart i think i'm gonna have to dip this one to get it started but let's go for it in terms of writing performance for the vintage duo cart I was very pleasantly surprised. When I was looking at this pen at first, I thought it was kind of an unassuming looking, you know, nib, similar to how a Parker 51 would write. But as it turns out, it was a lot closer to, somewhat unsurprisingly in retrospect, a vintage 88. Super nice flow, very bouncy, good amount of feedback, so it feels nice and precise, but overall a very pleasant feeling vintage style nib. Uh, no one, I know would be disappointed in this type of uh, nib. Of course, there's a little bit of skipping here, but I think that's just because I dipped it instead of having the cartridge full, uh, which, you know, that's my bad. Uh, 
Overall, it didn't actually get that much line variation when pushing it a little bit, but it definitely bounces, similar to like a newer style elastic nib instead of a true semi-flex. I also love the shape of this nib. I mentioned it earlier, but it really flows nicely with the overall grip shape, and I appreciate that. I think there's something stylistically that I appreciate here, and also just the writing performance is something that I found myself just doodling with even when preparing for this video. I also found pleasant surprise in using the modern duocart nib. I think the surprise aspect of it came from my mediocre to bad experience from a much more expensive Aurora, so I didn't have the biggest expectations going into this. However, this medium steel gold-plated nib wrote very, very well. It was super smooth, uh, no skipping, no scratchiness in any way, pretty wet flow, surprisingly. Uh, normally I've seen, you know, drier nibs of this shape and size, but I honestly found myself writing with this pen more than the vintage one in testing, just because it was easy to pick up and write. As nice as a bouncy nib is, sometimes when you're writing quickly, it can be a little bit annoying. So having a nice stiff steel nib like this was actually pretty good, even though I put a little sad face in the writing sample. I do genuinely enjoy this nib, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Come at me if you must, but it's solid. It's a solid pen, even though I went into it with, you know, less than good expectations. Alrighty. We've been up close and personal with the duo carts. And frankly, as much as I really enjoyed the vintage one, I think that this is a case where the modern one is good enough to the point where I can recommend it as well. The things that you are not going to get from the modern pen, you would expect not to get in a modern pen. The gold flex nib, you know, the ebonite parts, the, all that stuff. The funky cartridge fill, which is actually, I think, a ding against the uh, the old duo cart because cartridges are hard to find. If you can only find one, it's going to rattle all the time, which is a pain. That is one area in which I believe the duo cart modern has an advantage. It is just, you know, it's a modern pen. It has a consistent stainless steel nib, and I know Aurora has pretty good quality control with their steel nibs, at least. If you want to know what I'm alluding to, check out my video on the Aurora 88. Um, but I genuinely do like the steel nib on this pen. It is pretty solid. It is good enough looking. And as much as I wish this was slightly lighter, like the vintage one, it's still a pretty, it does a bang up job of, you know, having that vintage aesthetic. If you can get your hands on a vintage duo cart and some cartridges, or at least you know, some kind of reproduction cartridge of some kind. I also recommend it. It is a quite an unusual little pen, but it is very pleasing in its proportions. I like the shorter cap. I feel like that's something no one really does, um, and who's to say why, but it does share a look with the Vintage 88s that I've seen. Uh, the clip is a really nice shape, and it's overall just kind of a fun, a fun little pen with a good little nib, and it's very, it's, good. it's a looker. It's very Italian. So, yeah, that pretty much does it. I feel like I've been having good luck lately. I feel like maybe I haven't, you know, in, in earlier videos, I've been a lot more sure on my stance of, like, are vintage pens better, are modern pens better, leaning towards vintage, as you might assume. But recently, like, you know, modern pens have been decent. <laughs> And I feel like with the advent of a lot more people getting into fountain pens, you know, modern manufacturers are stepping up to a certain degree to make their vintage remakes decent. Um, you know, of course, I could complain all I want about pricing, but I don't really have a beat on how much a duo cart, an a older duo cart, goes for. So I will let you all do the eBay perusal for for yourselves. So, I hope you enjoyed this look at these two fun Italian pens, uh, rather uncommon ones at that. And yeah, I hope you I hope you yeah, I hope to see you next time. Uh, feel free to go over to my Instagram at olive boy pens. Um, I love talking to you guys there. I post stuff that I don't post here. 
and generally it's a good place to uh, if you want to keep up with the uh, olive oil content <laughs> um, yeah yeah I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you next time don't forget to subscribe